Hello and welcome to Science for Juniors with me, Scientist Radhe Krishna or SRK, the super scientist at work with my super bright assistant Binny. Binny, where are you? Up here, Professor. You on the ladder? I just fixed the fire alarm you asked for yesterday. Oh, wonderful, Binny. You know how absent-minded I am while working. And if just one chemical reaction goes out of control, it can cause fire with lots of smoke and toxic gases. It can be very destructive, you see. Yes, Professor. Fire can be very destructive and can burn almost everything. Yes, Binny. Do you know that the Great Fire of London in 1666 destroyed the entire city because the king's baker forgot to put out the fire that heated his oven. And of course, you never had fire alarms in those days, so you see... It's great to have a fire alarm then, Professor. But you still forget so much. I'm afraid you need a better plan than prevention and warning alone. Uh, yes, you may be right, Binny. And that's why we are going to study how to fight fire today. So let's enter the virtual world and learn how to fight fire. A fire breakout in buildings such as residential houses and offices can cause destruction of life and property. To reduce the destruction, fire needs to be controlled. The combustion of a substance requires fuel, oxygen and heat. So removal of any of these helps in controlling fire. The use of water to douse the flames is the most basic and prominent method of fire control. Water lowers the ignition temperature of the burning material or fuel and thus stops fire from spreading. Cutting off oxygen supply to the burning material is another effective way of controlling fire. One of the methods to cut off oxygen supply is to cover the burning material with a blanket. Fire extinguishers can also be used to control fire. A fire extinguisher contains sodium bicarbonate solution and concentrated sulfuric acid that react to produce carbon dioxide gas. The carbon dioxide gas so formed forms a blanket around the fire, cutting off the oxygen supply. And back into the real world, where we have just installed a fire alarm. Professor, I've heard a phrase often, fight fire with fire. Can you really fight fire with fire? Well, Binny, you see, to grow and rage on, a fire needs oxygen and a fuel, like wood or other combustible things that can catch fire. Now, if you remove oxygen, you can kill fire. And if you remove the fuel it feeds on, you can kill the fire again. And sometimes, you know, a fire is killed by creating fire. How is that possible, Professor? Well, haven't we recently seen how difficult it is to put out fire in an oil well? So sometimes, what is done is that in a nearby area of where a fire has occurred, a blast is done by detonating dynamite. This blast eats all the oxygen of the area and hence fire is controlled. Hmm, clever but dangerous too, Professor. How can we control fire in our lab if it ever occurs? Easy, with the help of a fire extinguisher. Sir, can you tell me more about fire extinguishers and how do they work? Of course, Binny. Let's study about fire extinguishers in the virtual world. A fire extinguisher is a portable container of chemicals that is used for extinguishing fire. There are different types of fire extinguishers. The simplest is the soda acid fire extinguisher. The soda acid type fire extinguisher is made up of three parts, container, bottle and knob. The container has sodium bicarbonate solution and the bottle contains sulfuric acid. When the knob is struck, the bottle breaks and the sulfuric acid reacts with the sodium bicarbonate to liberate carbon dioxide gas. 
the carbon dioxide released forms a blanket around the fire and cuts off the oxygen supply. And welcome back to the real world where Binny will now demonstrate the use of a fire extinguisher filled with carbon dioxide. So, ready Binny? Because we... Uh, ouch! Oh, sorry, sir. Ah, Binny, my bright clumsy Binny, it's not your fault. You see, these extinguishers release highly pressurized carbon dioxide. But Professor, I, I was so careful. Now I wonder why we use these. Why, Binny? It's elementary. Carbon dioxide fire extinguishers are used to put out fire caused by inflammable or combustible liquids like gasoline, oil, etc. And those caused by electrical equipment where you can't use water. I'm enjoying this knowledge, Professor. Tell me more about how does carbon dioxide extinguishes fire? Now, carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen. So, carbon dioxide extinguishers fight fire by covering the fire like a blanket. This cuts off the supply of oxygen and hence, fire is extinguished. Wow! But how can we know that carbon dioxide is heavier than air? Fine! Let's go into the virtual world and let's see an activity to learn this. Let's explore about the properties of carbon dioxide by performing a simple activity. For the first activity, you will require one empty gas jar or in other words, a gas jar containing air one gas jar full of carbon dioxide gas and one candle. To begin the activity, invert the gas jar full of carbon dioxide gas over the empty jar and wait for some time. Now light the candle and introduce it in the upper gas jar. You will observe that the candle continues to burn. Then, introduce the candle in the lower gas jar. You will be surprised to notice that the candle extinguishes in no time. What inferences can you draw from it? Well, you all know that air supports combustion. The extinguishing of candle in the lower jar confirms that the lower jar does not contain any air now. Whereas, the burning of candle in the upper jar indicates the presence of air in it. Let us now conclude our observation. During this activity, the carbon dioxide gas which was originally present in the upper jar moves to the lower jar. At the same time, the air originally present in the lower jar moves to the upper jar since carbon dioxide gas is moving down by displacing the air present in the lower jar. It can be inferred that carbon dioxide gas is heavier than air. Welcome back into the real world. Now, my mother used to say, there is no smoke without fire. So if you smell smoke like I smell right now, well, you better look for the source of... Ah! Professor! Whew, that was close. And Benny, you did an excellent job. Cutting out the oxygen with the cloth. Smart girl. Now, do you know how to let fire not get out of control? Yes, Professor. By being attentive and not absent-minded near fire. Uh, that's right too. Oh, Professor, I was wondering how our ancestors used to control fire. They never read science and I'm sure they never used fire extinguishers. Ah, Benny. Fire has fired up your intelligence. So, let me tell you this. Do you know that the ability of our ancestors to use fire is as old as 400,000 years ago? That's right. And the earliest cooked dinner would go back to almost 2 million years ago. That would be some dinner, Professor. Imagine eating uncooked raw food every day. Ugh. Not now, Binny. It wasn't just eating tasty meals. The ability to control and use fire changed the face of humanity in a dramatic way. If early man could use fire in a crude way to heat and cook, 
he could also use fire to keep himself warm, move to colder regions for survival and make sure animals looking for an easy meal at night kept well away from the heat and light generated by the fire. Of course, animals are afraid of fire. That's right. And since you are not a huge fan of raw food, you can understand how much difference it would have made to the early fire user's diet to eat a variety of food increasing intake of nutrients. So the use of fire kept becoming more and more popular and sophisticated. And today, we light a fire almost every time mummy goes to cook a yummy meal in the kitchen. And thank the intelligence of the early man for that. That's interesting. And now it's time to fight our way back to the beginning of the firefighting. Here's a recap. Combustion of a substance requires fuel, oxygen and heat. Removal of even one out of fuel, oxygen and heat helps in controlling fire. A fire extinguisher is used to control fire. A fire extinguisher is a portable container of chemicals that is used for extinguishing fire. There are different types of fire extinguishers. The simplest fire extinguisher is a soda acid fire extinguisher. Soda acid fire extinguisher contains sodium bicarbonate solution and concentrated sulfuric acid that reacts to produce carbon dioxide. And that's all we have about fighting fire today. Better not be absent-minded with fire around and never deliberately play with it ever. Remember, prevention is better. Yes, Professor. And it's so easy for fire to spread in most places, isn't it? We saw that in the lab just now. Yes, yes, Binny, we did. Especially as the air we breathe is almost 21% oxygen and fire only needs an atmosphere with at least 16% oxygen. So yes, be careful until we meet next time. Goodbye. Bye.